I would like to welcome you to this online worship service here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Bellingham, Washington. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus speaks about how he is going to suffer and be killed, but also rise again. And as he goes towards Jerusalem, taking up his cross in a life of service to one another, we are reminded that we are to follow our Lord and that in the end, we too have a glorious future, our own resurrection. Again, we are so glad to have you as a part of our worshiping community today. We begin our worship in the name of the triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our God claimed us as his own and set us on a lifelong journey. Our destination is life eternal in his presence. During our journey, we live by faith in light of what God has done for us in Christ. We listen to his word and respond by following his will. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy 
and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling of all your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O Lord, the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, but I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly, I will praise the Lord. For heavenly peace amid earthly trials of life and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace between the nations and that the work of the church may prosper, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all here assembled to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness and receive the blessings of his grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ears to hear the word of life and hearts to find contentment in Christ alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For unity and peace, that strife may not distract or hinder us from the work of God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that your will may be done on earth as in heaven, that we may rest in your peace and quietness, and that you may defend us against all our adversaries. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are the Lord of all power and might author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true faith. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen.
guys, hey, I was wondering if you could help me out. I am looking for my dog. His name is Gustav. He stands about this high. He's black and tan. Do you, do you think you could help me out and find him? I'm, I've been looking for him all over the place. Well, I'm still looking for him. Have you seen him anywhere? I've got some friends that said they'd help. He's where? He's right over there. there! Okay, I'll go now. Have you seen Gustav? He's right there! Have you seen Gustav yet? Well, it turns out that Gustav was right there the whole time. I just didn't see it. Well, there's someone else that's right here all the time. And I don't need to ask anyone where he is. I don't need to go looking for him. He's right here, and that's God. God's always by my side. He's here. God is right here, even in this coffee hour room. He is right here. He's right here. And here. He's here. And here. He's right here. He is right here. He's right here. It's a fact. You can look it up. He's right here. He's right here. So there's a Bible passage from Matthew 28 20. It says, For surely I am with you always. I'll be with you till the end of the age. God's with us. He's going to handle anything you've got going on in your life, whether you're happy or sad or scared. God's with you. So you just grab a hold of his hand whenever you need him. Because, you know what? He's here! And here! And here! And here! He's here! The Old Testament lesson comes from the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, Take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson comes from the 12th chapter of Romans. Let love be genuine, abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Lo live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, 
give him something to drink. For so by doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to 16th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The other day, my wife asked me a question. She said, when does fall begin? To me, that is a trick question. I mean, you could open up a calendar and point to September 22nd and say, that's when fall begins. 
However, when I was growing up, in my mind, fall began when school began. Because that meant um, summer fun living was over. Uh, the carefree days of summer had passed. It was back to school, back to work, back to learning, back to studying. And so for me, that was the beginning of fall. And because some schools have already started, some schools might be starting this week and other schools are gonna be starting after Labor Day. If someone were to ask me, when does fall begin? I still wonder, I have no idea. Uh, again, it seems like when school begins, that's when fall begins. But one of the things that we would do when our children were with us is we would seek to get away before getting back into the grind of school. We would take vacations. And one of the things that we would often do is go to these amusement parks or large water parks. Our children enjoyed going on rides and, and having the thrill of, of being there. You may have done this as well with your family, taking trips to these places. You know, the famous ones in Florida and, and California are Disneyland and Disney World, uh, Universal Studios, but I know that they are throughout the United States. And when we would get into the car and say, kids, we're gonna be going uh, to this amusement park, you could just see the joy and the anticipation in our children. You know, they were thinking, this is gonna be so great. And it was. Our children, as well as we, enjoyed going to those places. But what would happen if we piled into the car to go on a journey and we told our kids, you know, we're gonna do something different. We're not gonna to go to an amusement park where we're gonna have some fun and an enjoyment. We're actually gonna go and we're gonna work hard. There's gonna be pain and there's gonna be suffering. And actually there possibly might be death. You know, our kids, they would say, we're out of here. We're getting out of the car. That's not what we want. I want you to keep that in mind as we look at the gospel lesson for today. For in it, we see how Peter reacts to Jesus as he describes what does it mean for him to be the savior of the world, as well as what does it mean to be a follower of Christ. You need to remember that last week as we read the gospel lesson, Peter had this revelation from God. God revealed it to him about who Jesus truly was. He was the Christ, God's chosen one, the son of the living God. And the disciples were thinking, this is epic. This is great. Forget about children, little children going to Disneyland or Disney World and, and thinking for a while they are a prince or a princess. You know, being with God's chosen one meant you're going to live like kings in the presence of Jesus. They were, they were all excited. But then Jesus threw water on top of that. He revealed to them what it meant for him to be the Savior and also what it meant for them to be his followers. Yes, Jesus promised there is a glorious future. There is a resurrection. But first, there was the cross. So let's look at the gospel lesson for today. Again, after Peter uh, declared that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God, we hear these things. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance for me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but the things of man. Notice how strong was Peter's reaction to the possibility of suffering. And it's actually something which is natural. He had such a strong response to it that he rebuked, he scolded Jesus. 
the very person whom he claimed to be the very son of the living God. Contradicting Jesus, of course, is, is never a good thing. But also something that we see in this passage of Scripture is that, that Peter didn't hear everything that Jesus was talking about. He heard about the suffering and death, but he did not hear the promise of the resurrection. Jesus did declare that he would suffer and be killed, but on the third day, be raised. But Peter found no comfort in the resurrection. He was too disturbed by suffering. And isn't that the same for you and me? You know, we go through life and everyone will suffer. And being a Christian means sometimes there's suffering that's going to come to us just because we follow Jesus Christ. Some, it might be to a greater degree than another. But when suffering comes, when night is upon us, when despair darkens our future, our vision, you know, the promise of the resurrection at times seems far away. The fact that death precedes the resurrection, at times we forget about. Our aversion to suffering is so strong. But it's not only our dislike to suffering. Jesus also makes another point as he speaks about what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We are to deny ourselves and take up our cross. I mentioned that when our children were at home, we would pile into the car and go on vacations. For most of these trips, I did the majority of the driving. At times, my wife Kim would drive, and as our children got older, they would take turns behind the wheel. It's kind of fun to be behind the wheel, in the driver's seat. You are in control. You tell the car where it is to go. But when we call Jesus Lord, and when we acknowledge him as the Christ, we are acknowledging that he's in control, and it's not us. Jesus is in the driver's seat. It is not you and me. And we are not the ones who are to give directions to Jesus. Jesus is the one who gives directions to us. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Now, there is much that could be said about this. What does it mean to deny yourself and take up your cross? Well, in some ways, it means that there are things inside of us that need to die, that we need to let go of. And what are they? I think some big ones are our pride and our plans and our purpose. Um, I think we always need to put these things which are in our hearts and in our minds and, and put them against what God's will is for our life, to make sure that we are not seeking to, to take over and be in the driver's seat. And as we come before our God today, along with every day we, we wake up, we realize that too often we seek to take control over God in our lives, and we want to dictate to him what he should do for us, rather than listening what he would have us do on this day. But the good news that you and I have comes from the fact that even though our plans are always at times just mixed up and very self-centered, God had a plan for you and me, just as he had a plan for his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to die for your sins and mine and to rise again so that you and I can rest assured that our future is glorious. God has a plan for us. What does this mean? It means that as we go through life, um, we are to be open to what God would want us to do. That just as Christ served others, we are to serve one another in love. And we are able to do this. We are able to take time out of our schedule, out of our plans, because we know that our future ultimately is already secure because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. This, yes, enables us to deny ourselves and to follow Christ. 
Now, what does it mean to, to follow Jesus Christ? And how does that show up in our lives? Well, in the New Testament lesson for today, you can say that St. Paul gives some concrete examples of what it means to follow Jesus Christ. In this passage of scripture from the 12th chapter of Romans, I think is so appropriate for us living in the United States at this time. I say that because at times as I, I turn on the news, my heart just sinks. I look at what's happening with regards to the unrest, with regards to the destruction, with regards to the violence which is happening, where people are just screaming at one another and thinking, what would God want us to do? Well, we have God's answer for us in the 12th chapter of Romans. St. Paul says, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them. Do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. And if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. You know, I actually encourage you that this, this coming week, as, as you contemplate what does it mean to deny yourself that you maybe put these words from the 12th chapter of, of Romans um, in your hearts and minds, that you would read them and say, Lord, help me follow you and to live this kind of life with the power of your Holy Spirit. At the beginning of this message, I relayed a, a question which my wife asked me. She said, David, you know, when does fall begin? Maybe a more important question to ask ourselves today is, what season are we as Christians in? We know what season is coming, and that is our own resurrection. Just as Jesus Christ rose from the dead, that's our future as well. But right now, what season are we in? We are in that time when we are to follow our Savior, to take up our cross, to love one another as he has loved us. What will this entail? Will there be bumps in the road? Will there be suffering? Will be, there be hardship? I have no idea. I am not God. I don't know exactly what is in store in your life in the next couple weeks or years. But I do know this, that in light of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, and in light of, of what's in store for us with regards to our own resurrection from the dead, this enables us to live freely following our Savior in a life of, of joy and service to one another. Now is the season to show kindness and goodness to others, to be patient, to endure hardship, and to, receive, and to seek to reflect the love of God in all that we do. You know, as students begin school, it's obvious that it's time to get back to work. Well, as Christians, we are also called to follow Jesus Christ. It's time for us to show God's love being reflected in our lives, his compassion in all that we say, in all that we do, in all that we think. That's what time it is. Amen.
Thank you so very much for being part of this worshiping community. What a blessing it is to be able to gather together and lift up our, our voices in praise to hear what God would have to say to us as well as to offer him our prayers. And we ask that you would continue to remember Trinity Lutheran in your prayers and that as you are able, that financially you would continue to support the ministry which is going on here. We continue now as we bring our prayers before our Lord. Knowing the will of God, that all would come to find salvation in Christ, let us pray on behalf of all people according to their needs. We pray for our faith and faithfulness. Give us strength in time of trial. We lift up those persecuted for the cause of Christ. We pray for the church, for the pastors and church workers who serve us, and for those at home and abroad who bring the message of salvation to those who have not heard. Guide all those who lead us in government, as well as uh, those who work for peace among our communities and the nations. We ask that you would send favorable weather. Bless those who tend the soil and harvest its fruits. Bless all good business and industry. We also ask that you would be with the service workers as well as those who serve in the military and serve as police officers. We lift up those who are married. Help them live in fidelity to their vows and promises. We pray for parents as they teach their children to know and to love the Lord, for single adults that they may find fulfillment in their service to others, and for our lives together in Christ. Give to us the grace we need to take up the cross and follow the Lord wherever he leads. Courage in the face of challenge and adversity and compassion and harmony in our life together. In our prayers for today, we continue to lift up Gloria, Alice, John, and Lou, along with Mike, Henry and his family, and Spiro. Be with Steve and Mary Jo, Pat, Priscilla, Roberta, Sandy, and Susie. Lord, you know what is going on in the lives of these people. Be a rock and a fortress for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up those who have recently lost loved ones. We think of the family and friends of Ron Carlson as well as Francis Black. Assure them of the hope that we have because Jesus not only died, but he rose again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we give thanks to families, we lift up Carl and Linda, who will celebrate 25 years together. We ask that you would continue to be with them, drawing them closer to each other, and that you would continue to bless them as you have in the past. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Thank you so very much for being, again, a part of our worshiping community today. And I pray that as this week goes forth for you, that you would follow Christ. And that you would exemplify that, that life of love and care for one another, as St. Paul encouraged us to do in his letter to the Romans. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Until we meet next week for our online service. Take care.